Hello, my name is Graham Smith and I'm an international business alumni that graduated in 2020 and I'll just speak briefly about my academic and professional journey. I started out um, as a BHP student, also majoring in finance, interested in career in investment banking in New York City. Um, after studying abroad in Buenos Aires, Argentina, after my freshman year, I realized, okay, international is where it's at. I want to move internationally, live internationally. But I was really confused about how to make that happen. And uh, I stuck with the finance degree for another semester and a half. And then after, I, I still knew I wanted to do international business, but I let other people's fears uh, and my own fears um, disguised as practicality keep me from making that switch and I first changed to BHP and marketing um, or no BHP and management and then BHP and marketing and after doing an unpaid internship in Shanghai uh, China for three months after my sophomore year, I returned and I realized, no, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what fear I have. I'm going to change my major to international business. And that's what I was for the last two years of college, BHP and international business. Now I tried to get first international internship that I did in China, I got through the um, UT International Office uh, International Internship Program, and it was really incredible, but I couldn't afford to do another unpaid one again. So for pretty much the entire junior year, I recruited for an international internship in either Asia or Latin America, and it was a very difficult process, but I ended up getting uh, an international internship at McKinsey and Company in Costa Rica. I was working in the public and social sector practice in the San Jose office and I did that for about six weeks after doing a Maymester program through McCombs in social entrepreneurship and I mean it was it was really um, the best of times and the worst of times and that logistically it was very difficult and the salary was greater than zero but it was not fair for the work that I was doing and there were a lot of difficulties that arose like I um, I had issues with my landlord and I had to move in with friends that I had met and I got um, injured a couple of times I got sick from water poisoning and it was it was just not really like what I wanted to be doing with my life, but I knew I didn't want to stay in the United States and I didn't want to ever work for a corporation again. Um, I don't know if I will work for a corporation again. I don't think I will, but obviously you never know what will happen in the future and I'm open to anything. But as of right now, my career path is something that really excites me and it's going to give me a lot of freedom in my life and a lot of um, really meaningful work in my day-to-day -day job and that's being an overseas ESL teacher. I've been unemployed living at home since graduating in uh, May. I did get a, an English teacher certification called a CELTA Certificate in English Language Teaching to Adults through the University of Texas and Cambridge University in June and July. Um, it was a four-week program and yeah after that I've just been having time with my parents and my grandparents and visiting Austin as much as possible to hang out with uh, with beloved friends and uh, enjoy the beautiful city that is Austin, Texas. And I initially thought I was going to go to China because I took Chinese classes in college. You know, I went to China previously, but with, with COVID and with the uh, tensions between US and China, it just was not possible. And I instead applied to the EPIC program, the English program in Korea, South Korea, which is 
where I will be going on February 6th. I plan on teaching in South Korea for two years. Um, I have a one-year contract that you can renew as much as you want. The first two years are tax-free in both countries, and it's a pretty pretty decent salary, uh, especially tax-free. I'll be making about 2200 US a month, and I'll have a fully furnished apartment that is provided, and a lot of stability just working for the government and teaching in public schools in the uh, Northeast Kangwondo province. And I'm really, uh, really excited for it. And I'm going to learn as much Korean as possible and have an open mind on all of the food and all of the cultural differences. And I am just going to uh, have the time of my life. And after two years of that, saving money every month, I want to travel in as many Southeastern Asian countries as possible, staying in each one for about one to three months and living off of my savings and teaching online to children in China uh, through a company like VIP Kid if I need additional funds. And I would like to um, live in some cool Airbnbs and hostels and paint and draw and write and you know, learn new languages and make friends all over the world and just grow beyond, uh, beyond this body and beyond my uh, cultural upbringing that I've had so far. And then after that, I think I will come back to the United States and live a few months with my parents and you know, reconnect with my friends and uh, stuff like that. And then hopefully get a job teaching English overseas in China and get a work visa uh, through a consulate here in the United States and then head off to uh, mainland China and live and work there for many years and uh, try and make as much money as possible doing the English teaching both in the base contract and also more entrepreneurially through private tutoring and business English and um, just things that I do on my own that aren't going to be possible where I'm going in Korea. So I'd be happy to, you know, be friends with you or talk to you or give you any advice if possible or listen to your story. Uh, I've been where you are and I know that you're in kind of a difficult position, especially with, with COVID but I can assure you that there is a path for you and you are going to be more than just fine because um, you know, you've had the, the courage and the bravery to say this is what I want to do and um, a lot of your peers don't have that and are going to find themselves in many years realizing I don't love what I'm doing and I wish I could take it back and do something else, but us international business people, we we may have more difficulties, we may have our own past that don't have as much guidance or certainty, but we know we're doing what is authentic and what we want to do, and we're living lives that we are consciously creating and not just doing what we think we're supposed to. So I'll leave it at that. I've gone about double the time that Devra told us to, so apologies for that. But if you'd like to contact me, my email address is gramcsmith at utexas.edu, G-R-A-H-A-M-C-S-M-I-T-H at utexas.edu. I'm also on LinkedIn, Graham Smith. And I have started a YouTube channel uh, called A Speck of Hope um, that I'm going to use as a way of communicating with friends back home and, and you know trying to blow up on YouTube a little bit if possible uh, with my journey in Korea and beyond and just my, my insights on, uh, on life and, and everything like that. So if you want to give that a follow, 
uh, I would be I would be honored. Um, and that is it. I'm coming at you from a beautiful little vacant lot in San Antonio, Texas. And uh, yeah, just even if you don't know what you're doing, uh, just believe in yourself because it will work out. I guarantee we are all on our own pass and even if you don't know what that may be um, you're doing everything right and uh, and I believe in you so have a wonderful day peace out